your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your mom, mom and, and dad. dad. It's your Good parents. Morning. And guess what, everyone? Today, one of the biggest things we're going to talk mm-hmm. about is the fact that we just had our 12th year wedding yes. anniversary. We've been together for like 18, 19 years at this point. And so we're like, hey, family, send in questions all about our relationship. Mm-hmm. Some advice questions, too. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And guess what happened literally probably 20 minutes before we started recording this podcast, we got in an argument. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> we're fighting right now. So if you need advice, we got gotcha. you. So we're no longer having our 12-year wedding anniversary, mm-hmm. and we won't be speaking during this episode. Yes. We will be starting a new podcast called Dad, and then the separate one called Mom. And your mom and your dad's not here. So sorry to break the news, everybody, but yes, yes. You guys moved out of the house, and now yep. we are separated. Oh, that feels triggering. That it's was too trigger. much. Like, that just took me back to my oh, childhood. Yeah, I did not sorry like about that, guys. Too much. Classic dad move. Take it too far. My apologies. It's so, it really is a wild. We're like, we're about to dive in and talk mm-hmm. all about like all these intimate things about our relationship. And then we have a full blown argument. What are we fighting about? Uh, what are we fighting about this yeah. morning? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I just want to say this. This is a great way to start this. Please, okay, everybody? please tell me what we're fighting about. Let's hear this. This is going to be rich. <laughs> this is a great way to start this episode, everyone. Yes. And that's this. We have been together at this point. I got to do the math. Like 18 and a half years, probably. 300 years. <laughs> Shut up. You're such an asshole. <laughs> 3 to 320. <laughs> we were together like 18, 19 years. And we love each other so much. And this is the only person I want to be with. But don't make no mistakes mm-hmm. when you see like a happy couple where you're like, wow, like, you know. They seem like they're doing. Yeah. Where there, there's always arguing going on. I, I mean, I know Maybe. there are I mean, some listen, people. I will I say guess some, I, some, unless some people, they're liars, some people do say stuff like we never fight. And I, mean, I, I guess, guess there are some I, people out there who don't ever fight. I suppose that well, that's not us. We argue. And I would love to kind of shame them into thinking they're <laughs> <Don't>. passionless. <laughs> dead inside people you're like oh okay like that's the way oh that you, you never fight yeah like that's oh. the way that you kind of like make yourself feel better right like you have no go, zest. oh well that's because they're dead inside you know what i mean like they have no souls and so they're sitting there just like staring at the wall of course they're not fighting but you know maybe they're just like they've reached nirvana Who yeah knows? let's but, talk crap on people that'll make yeah, us feel anyone who's doing well if you talk crap on them it makes you feel better it's crazy <laughs> but i just want to say that like yeah. i'm sorry you know it, w- we, like I said, we love each other so much yeah. and we have so much fun together. But the truth of the matter is like, yeah, duh, of course we argue. So today what our argument was about, um, and this is a very common argument mm. in our space. Yeah, Evan has been extremely busy with work. Yeah. And let me tell you something about me, family, okay? Mm. I might not be the cleanest person, nor the most on top of things type person. And I am kind of floaty, but I need a schedule. I live a god. A love language for me is like if I have a friend who's like, we're gonna go out of town for this weekend, here's a schedule. I love a schedule. Mm. Okay. So I'm constantly fun. trying to schedule. So fun. <laughs> I'm that fun it's like we're going on a, par- a weekend away yeah. let's not relax let's have a schedule listen the schedule can be loose and the yeah. schedule can literally say from you know 8 a.m to no schedule to 5 yeah, p.m yeah, yeah. no schedule uh-huh. yeah, yeah, but like yeah. but i like to, to know i need to know like are we going to out to dinner tonight yeah. and around what time so mm-hmm. i know when i can start getting ready and like mm-hmm. get in like an energy space okay yeah. i live for a schedule now the industry that Evan's in with the music of it all, schedule be damned, right? Everyone's just kind of flying. It's all loose mm-hmm. and last minute and whatever. So when he's super busy, I want a schedule. Mm-hmm. Even if I'm not super busy, I would like a schedule. Yes. So this morning, you know, he's running around later today and zipping around for the next few days. And I'm just like, okay, so like, what's the exact schedule of what's yeah. going on? And Evan is like, well, hey, I, I don't know. And then I'm like, I need an outline of the schedule because what happens is, is when we get to I'm some already point. Falling asleep, by the way. Anyone <laughs> else? It's when, we get to, <laughs> when we get to some point later in the days, yeah. you will become to me and be like, well, 
what about this? Like, do you know what's going on this time, yeah, this time? And you and you rely on the schedule. Sure, sure. Right? I, I At think some that's point, valid. Then, and then you're kind of like, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, hold yeah, up, yeah, hold yeah, up, yeah, hold yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are you are shaming the schedule and not yeah. and not giving me answers to the schedule. Yes, hundred percent. But then you you need the schedule mm-hmm. and you love the schedule. Mm-hmm. And so then we got in a fight about that <laughs> beforehand because he wouldn't give me the schedule and it was a little yeah. bit like, hey, babe you know take a deep breath and yeah. i was like oh no 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 and he didn't say that to me everybody but that was kind of the energy well, that I, think, I took yeah okay so i didn't respond well to it yeah and i was mad well i think what happens for the, <laughs> I ended the podcast because this is kind of like a whole thing you yeah. know what i mean like i think a lot of people probably deal with this like the whole there's a scheduler and then there's like a floater vibe sure 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 sure, sure. what's what's interesting to me and is it, like and i shout out to my schedulers because god you know it's so frustrating yeah you floaters yeah 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 yeah, sure you're the sure you're the life of the party everybody loves you you know what i mean it's like oh they're so they're all they're free they're flowing but like there would be no party if someone didn't plan the party it's funny because i feel like this is yeah (laughs) basically i should just leave because you're talking in a vacuum right now you're like answering your own questions and then like giving yourself own your own mic drops and then like (laughs) like no one else has participated in this okay no um (laughs) no but hear me out Uh uh-huh my issue Mm -hmm. for this morning is that jess will do this thing where it's like okay she wants a schedule right Mm -hmm. and but the issue is that she'll she'll be kind of the scheduler Mm -hmm. but then she'll randomly walk up to me and go what's the schedule and it's like well okay hold on you have kind of taken it upon yourself to kind of schedule yeah, 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 and then you'll just look at me randomly in kind of like a annoyed way, and be like, "What's the schedule?" Like you just flipped rev rolls on us, yeah. And then we're like, kind of frustrated that I wasn't also planning in in like Congrats. parallel with you. You know why? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's kind of like if I cook every single meal, uh-huh. okay? What you do? Go ahead. I, no, but, but then, but then all of a sudden at 5 p.m. I go, "What's for dinner?" Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. It's a little bit like, well, I don't know, like that's. We haven't, you know, that that's kind of been your vibe lately is that you do that. You know what I'm saying? You know so what? It feels a little <laughs> bit like what's for dinner. Like when it's like I was, you know what I'm saying? So listen, here's what I will say. Yeah. You're right in regards to like, I don't love the scheduling, yeah. but then I become reliant on the scheduling. Yeah. So for sure you're right. The only thing is that. And help me out here, schedulers. Maybe you could help me, you know, with this is it's the planning of the stuff that doesn't need to be planned. That gets very confusing to me. Like, yeah. like, what time are you leaving this morning to go to work? OK, it's for my it's own like, brain. It's like, <laughs> why do you need to know when I'm leaving for work? If it's like an hour difference. Right. Yeah. So it's like, let's say I'm going to leave for work be- between nine and ten or mm-hmm. nine and ten thirty even. Yep. But we have no plans to hang out. We have no plans <laughs> to do anything together. You don't need me for anything. Uh-huh. But there's like this, by the way, um, what time are you leaving tomorrow morning for work? And it's like, uh, I don't know, probably like 930. Oh, okay. Like that right there, unnecessary. But it's a part of the thing. But can I, you know what I'm but saying? do you know what it is? It's my, it's the anxiety. It's like, it's that, it's, I just like, you know me. Mm. I'm like, I don't care when you come and when you go. Right. But I like to know just for my yeah that's for my interesting. energy shifts because you don't really care no it's you, not like i'm like yeah. oh yeah you do what you do what you need to do right, right, but for right. my anxiety the yes. scheduler mm. needs to know like hey just sure. so that i know in my in my, my energy space yes. oh this this energy will depart from the house mm. Around nine thirty. Oh, interesting! You're controlling energy. <laughs> I think I'm pretty superhuman at this point. <laughs> I did not see this coming. I think I'm pretty superhuman at this point. Yeah, as an energy controller, <laughs> okay. as a maestro of yeah. <laughs> physics, I need okay. to kind of know for my own brain mm. how and when the comings and the goings of the auras. It just helps. It yes. helps my. It, it helps me. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. It's kind of uh-huh. like, you know, you want to know what to look forward to or like, you know, kind of yes. like, oh, OK, I have. Yeah. And do I sometimes bring it up like, hey, well, are you do you know the schedule? Mm. Should I work on that? Sure. Because there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's a and should part. I chill out for sure? You mean you chill out? <laughs> yeah. Should I chill out? Yes. Like about that. And maybe I, sh- I should schedule sometimes. Here's the thing. 
sometimes, and it's not the right thing to do, but sometimes I bring up, do you know the plan? Because for instance, it's like, I've been watching a lot of Jurassic Park lately. I've been Mm. binging from like start to finish the whole, you know, into Jurassic World. And it's like this, it's like the person in Jurassic Park or Jurassic World who always has the plan and everyone else is relying on them to know like, which way are we going next? How do we solve this dinosaur problem? Sometimes they got to look at someone and go, do you know what's next? Because in case... I get, I, I, we lose each other on the path. The I need to yeah. know in, 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 in case the T-Rex snatches me, yes. you need to know yes. how A, B and C are going to go. Does this make any sense? You know what? It does to me. And I totally hear what you're saying. I mean, definitely wild kind of like, you know, spins and turns there, but I will say a hundred percent. And just lastly, I will say this. <clears throat> it always ends up being the better thing. My schedule. Yeah. Because it's like, well, I'm glad we did this or else we would just be sitting at home or like, you know. And so it creates memories and all these things. So you are correct. I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. the result. Process, not so much. And I think that's something I need to work on. Well, it's you not know fun. what? It's not fun talking about. I'm sorry that I am a little bit of, um, I am a little controlling with the schedule. <laughs> It's it, and that's the funny thing is it's not control. You're never like this is what we're doing. It's the opposite. It's kind of like a we just need to have what we're doing on. But on I'm paper. you know what I'm just saying to you is that I can get. I understand my anxiety can get to me and I get a little uptight about yeah. like hey I need to know exactly mm-hmm. what a schedule what your schedule is going to look like yes. so that I can be at peace instead of right. just going free flowing okay. and. Um, that that so that was the argument this morning, <laughs> that was and the that's argument a free, and that's honestly one of our most frequent arguments. It it's is. it's life. It's the difference between the planner and the free flower, yes. and how does that work together? Yes, and there's got to always be a give and a take. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just have to be like, "Yep, here's the schedule, twenty four seven And sometimes I have to be like, "Jessica, take a deep breath. You're not gonna know, <laughs> and you're never gonna know because that's just how life and is. That's and that's how life's we a river. keep things spicy. Is like, and if that's I leave how we to work keep five things. minutes late. It's like, whoa, living it's on sensual. the edge. <laughs> Can't believe you left five Anywho. minutes late to work. Can't wait to get back home tonight. <laughs> Anywho, I love you. I love you, baby. And happy, happy 12 years. <laughs> this is just the reality, it's people. The reality. It's just the reality. Um, okay. We're going to dive into all sorts of more personal mm-hmm, questions mm-hmm. about our relationship and some advice questions because obviously, clearly, we've got it, we all, got it all figured, figured out. out. Luckily for you. Um, but, uh, oh, and then we also have to talk about Ask the family about oh, yes. upcoming reality television. Yes. Yes, this yes. is very important. We'll get right to that. But first, got to take a quick pause. Mm-hmm. Family, I have been married to this absolutely gorgeous man for oh. 12 years. Okay. okay. Been together, like I said, 18, 19 years-ish. Um, and with Snore City McGee over Oof. here <laughs> sleeping Apologies, in you guys. It's so bad. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Snore City McGee <laughs> is sleeping in me tough. And it's important. I guess. <laughs> Are you starting another one right now? Continue, continue. It's important I get the quality sleep so I have time to schedule when I wake up in the morning, okay? I mean, I'm talking the real beauty <clears throat> sleep, okay? And no one does beauty sleep like a blissy pillowcase. Oh my God, family. I am so excited to tell you all about blissy pillowcases. It is my new obsession. I'll be getting them for everyone I love. Set yourself up with better sleep with Blissy's award-winning 100% mulberry silk pillowcases. I mean, who knew that a better pillowcase is all you need for a better sleep? Let's talk about practicing self-care while you sleep, which I love. Seriously, Silk is what is best for your hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, prevents breakage. That's because it keeps the moisture in your hair. And oh my gosh, this is something that is so cool that I didn't even think about until I got my Blissey. It keeps your skincare products and natural moisture on your skin while cotton literally absorbs it off your face. So with the, the silk pillowcases with the Blissey, it's incredible. Say goodbye to wrinkles, dry, flaky, and red skin in the morning and wake up with healthier and shinier hair. I mean, wow, I have noticed a significant difference. I wake up with my hair so smooth. Evan's been using Blissey too when you were talking about how it keeps your nighttime skincare mm-hmm. on your face. Mm-hmm. That's huge. You wake up so moisturized. You might be snoring, but your skin is popping, honey. <laughs> snoring, but glowing. <laughs> snoring, but 
glowing. <laughs> it's amazing, and they are so comfortable too, and luxurious. Here's the deal, though: there are a lot of dupes out there that claim satin can be an alternative to silk, but that is definitely not the case. Satin is made from synthetic fibers like polyester, while silk is a luxurious all-natural fiber. Silk is more breathable, moisture-wicking, and it's gentle. It's also more durable and long-lasting. Think of it as an investment in getting better sleep and waking up feeling ready to take on the day. Also, Blissey pillowcases are made of 100% mulberry silk, which is naturally hypoallergenic. And unlike other silk pillowcases, these are the highest quality silk and are machine washable and durable, which is a huge plus. It's so convenient. Like I said, I am obsessed. I'm buying them for everyone as gifts now, okay? They also come in this gorgeous packaging. So it's just, it's perfect. Everybody loves them. They have a ton of different prints and colors. And like I said, they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. They have over 1 million raving fans and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash mom dad pod and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash mom dad pod and use code mom dad pod to get an additional 30% off your skin and your hair will thank you. By the way, they also have amazing silk sleep masks and hair accessories and their pillow. It's this a sleep mist for their pillows. It makes our bedroom smell like a five-star hotel. Instant luxury. It's incredible. So check out Blissey. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> I love you. You ready for this? I'm wondering, I'm like, does the family know that I like that I have a little bit of a stick up my butt? You know you, what I mean? I'm a little bit of, I'm a little more I I, I don't it's know. It's definitely if the a family false representation that. of yourself. What like, do you that's, mean? That's well, I just feel like this is a little bit of a strange part of you. You know what I'm saying? Like the scheduling side oh, when sure, it comes to like sure. schedule like life and schedule. Like other than it, that, that's I'm what I'm kind saying. Of it's a not mess. it's not like you're <laughs> that person who's you know what I'm saying? Who's no, just when like, you walk in my house and it's <clears throat> you know, it's like a little messy. Not a little, it's gonna be a lot of messy if Evan's not around and she doesn't know how to cook for you and she's not. What's well, funny, I feel like we are opposites. Organized. In it's that true. like I'm fairly kind of not super structured, but semi structured when it comes to certain parts of my life. But then when it comes to like just our schedule as a family, that's yeah. when I kind of really like slack off. And mm-hmm. that's where you step up. So what a puzzle piece we fit. Wow. What a, what a wow. piece. You know what's so funny is someone, one of the questions that someone sent in was, are you guys ever annoyed at each other on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it right before we started. <laughs> And I was like, I don't think I was trying to think of a time. I'm like, I don't think I ever have gotten. I don't think I get annoyed at you during the podcast, except if you're sometimes when you're busy with work yeah. and I can see your My mind. I watch your brain things. all of a sudden leave well, you your body energy, uh, as an energy maestro. Maestro, you're seeing <laughs> when the I energy. see your brain leave your body. Then sometimes I'm like, Evan, we're here, and I know you're thinking yeah, about like something yeah. else, and I'm like, we need to stay here. <clears throat> there but has like, been times like full transparency. There has been times in the podcast where like. I ch- I'm like listening to you and I have this moment where like something pops in my brain about something I got to do or something and we'll go like two minutes and then, then all of a sudden I'm like, what is she, what was she saying? Do you think we and need I'm to like, do full, tra- you don't think I know this? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> well, that was like full transparency to the family. I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, oh shit, I really hope that like she kind of says something to bring me back in so that I know what she's talking about because there is a chance that I'll just look have to look at her and go like, I have no idea what just happened. The last Those are the minutes. only times that I feel like I've ever yeah. gotten annoyed where yeah. I'm like, but definitely like we've been in disagreements before an episode has started. Yeah. But I feel like oh, typically yeah. once we start recording, like within the first like 10 minutes and yeah. we get in, we're like, it actually is like kind of healing. Mm. And then by the time the podcast is done, then, then we're it's like, good. we had a great time. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yeah. If we ever like get like if there's ever an issue in the podcast, it generally has to do with like flow or like mm-hmm. us forgetting something or like what are we talking about or you know, some shit like that. But like it's never like, yeah, it's it's always that. But it's like once we're in it and you're flowing, you kind of like forget about all the issues of your life. No, and then the things, it's just like and then it's you're the kind fun of, you're, part. You're in the fun part. Yes. It's the fun part. Yes. Anywho, family. <sighs> wow. This is just welcome to our front room. This is very this is exposing very front room energy. therapy, yes. therapy hour. Um, and we're about to get more mm-hmm, into that mm-hmm. with some of these questions that you all sent us. 
um, in celebration of the 12 year. What if it starts another fight for us? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, but okay. Something that's very important that we need to discuss oh, yeah. is what reality TV shows we're going to be mm-hmm. covering upcoming mm-hmm. on this podcast, which I'm yes. so excited about. What reality TV are we going to dive into? Because obviously we have The Bachelor. I believe they said July we're yeah. going to be getting. So I'm assuming the top of July we'll get our next season of The Bachelor. Up. But in the meantime, here's the deal. I seek you out, family. We need the family mm-hmm. on this mm-hmm. one because I had mentioned, I think like a week ago, Throw us some DMs, some ideas about what shows you are interested in having us cover. Um, got a lot of brand or I'll say all over the place yeah. ones, like all different opinions. There were two that seemed to be quite consistent. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised. Number one is Trader Season 2. It seems like many members of the family want us to cover Trader Season 2, which we'd be so into. Yes. My absolutely. only question is you know, it's done. Right. So the conclusion is out there. I don't know who won. I haven't been following it, but are you all interested in us covering something that's done? I've heard it's fabulous, but would you be into that? The other one is love is blind Sweden. Yeah. Which I heard is fantastic, but also really dramatic and all those. So those are the two Mm -hmm. love is blind Sweden and traitors Two. And I'm asking the family, what are your thoughts and opinions on this? Yeah. Okay. Um, are there, uh, is there another show that you're like, oh my God, please, this one instead? So maybe what I'm thinking is if you all, even if you're listening to this on audio, I'll put the link to the YouTube episode. If you, maybe you can go into the YouTube and put all your thoughts and feelings yeah. in the YouTube comments, it'd be an easy place for my scheduling brain yes. <laughs> to keep it contained. All the energy in one area. Right, where you shout out what are you interested in us covering or liking mm-hmm. what you're interested in. So another person's comment, you know, yeah. do you want traders too? Love is blind, Sweden. Is there something else? I will tell you this much. The Circle, it was just announced, is coming back, I believe, April 17th. And we do really want to cover The Circle because I love the show The Circle. I think it's been like a year and a half since the last season. And I've heard there's going to be a ton of twists and turns. And I'll say this. We love a Netflix Mm -hmm. recap because we meet just so many characters. Like Love is Blind. We like recapping it because there are characters. And The Circle has characters, Mm -hmm. like fun people. So I really am convinced we'll have a fun time Mm -hmm. recapping that. Also then, in May, The Goat is airing, which is a reality TV competition that is including our beloved Taisha and then Grocery Store Joe. I was hoping it was kind of just a reality TV show about goats. <laughs> and kind of like looking for trash on the open plains. But Okay, continue. You know I'd watch that. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. You know I'd watch There's There was a YouTube channel that we found, what was it, like a year ago, where it's this gentleman who's like besties with raccoons oh, yeah. and streams his time with raccoons and for like, like... 150 that come to his uh like his porch and he just feeds his, them. like and deep cabin in the yeah. woods and he just like live streams feeding all these raccoons. That's and I watched that shit for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I sat there so also drop that if you want to watch Raccoon Man. <laughs> Old videos we posted 10 years ago. If you want to to recap that we will um the goat there's though, not it, much yeah it's, it's kind of a there's not really new twists and turns it's kind of the same thing every time but anyway back to the goat not <laughs> a goat documentary not a goat documentary in fact um it's a gay or not like, kind of like a uh reality tv type show where they compete to see yeah. who is the ultimate influencer Alyssa right. edwards from Ru- rupaul's drag race is on it who i am Super fan. A wild fan of. Um, I feel like that would be really fun to cover. That starts in May. So I will say the circle and the goat are the two that we're really feeling like we definitely should be covering. Right, right. But here's the thing. We got next week and then we got our every other week episode. Right. So we're like, what else can we chat we got about? A couple weeks here. So yeah. here we got potentially the traders, Love is Blind Sweden. Please let, let us, us know. know. Yeah. Shout out in the comments and also let us know if like you're excited about the circle and yes. the goat. Like I said, I'm pretty sure we're going to do those. But if right. something else pops up, we want to hear from the family. Yes. Okay? Participate. I care about what you all want to see us recap mm-hmm. and hear us recap. And there are so many amazing shows. Um, also, of course, we have the Vanderpump of it all going on in Vanderpump yeah. Villa. But I feel like I haven't heard the family really chatting yeah. about Vanderpump or Vanderpump Villa. So I want to do I don't know. 
Drop in the comments. Tell us what we need to do. The ones that take I care off. care about what you all yes. think and what you want to see and hear. We feel like, you know when your mom and dad text the kids and no one <laughs> responds? You know what I mean? Like, that's what we're trying to avoid. So we're t- we just sent out the text right now. We yeah. just sent you the text. It says, hey, are you all coming for Christmas? Mm-hmm. Okay. Please respond to the Please text. Please respond. So YouTube comments. And then yeah. maybe what I'll do if I feel like I'm still, there's still kind of a, a conversation where I'm feeling I'm unsure, maybe I'll uh, go on our Your Mom and Dad Instagram we'll and put up down, polls maybe, yeah. perhaps. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but we'll keep you all updated. And we're diving into numerous reality TV shows. That's definitely mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. So Love anywho, it. hope any of that made sense. I just, I care about what the family thinks that it feels. And I just, it's important yeah. to me. And Drop I want to hear. Let us know. But I am really excited about the circle. Yeah. I've talked about how I auditioned for the circle yes. on the show, right? Uh, I think you did. I got really close, I think. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I think. It's hard to know. But I feel like you did. I feel like you had I quite a few I meetings did. about I had it. quite a few interviews, but I missed it. And I was, I would have been probably, what, maybe season four, perhaps? Mm. Season three or season four. And I got real close, yeah. but I think I just missed it. Mm. Um, I'm a big fan of the show. I yeah. like the strategy. And I feel like there are a lot of fun people that you meet. If you haven't watched The Circle before, check it out. The first few seasons, fabulous. Um, and then also too, we do have the perfect match that's coming up in during the summer, I believe, which is a bachelor in paradise Netflix Mm -hmm, style show. mm -hmm. So we'll have our love is blind friends on it. We'll have our, the circle friends too hot to handle. So we want to be diving into those recaps, those seasons, the circle too hot to handle as well. So we're kind of like, Oh, okay. Yeah. We know the characters who will be on the next perfect match. So Anywho, that is that. <laughs> that was our housekeeping. Give mom her schedule, okay, everyone? <laughs> Sorry, that was boring for everyone. But I had to. I have to figure it out. I love it. I have to figure Drop it out. Drop a comment. Let us know. Let us know, everybody. Okay, should we just dive yeah. right into this? Yes, Let's yes, dive yes. straight in. Um, so the family, in celebration of our anniversary, has sent questions for us personally, Evan. Um, questions and voicemails. Also some voicemails. Yes. Um, let's do a couple quick fire questions yeah. before we get to a. Vo- There's a specific voicemail that I want to get to okay. because it was the most common question we received. Okay. 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 Got so it. I want to get into that. But here's a few quick fire. Okay, let's go. Um, do you openly fart in front of each other? No. That is we, a no. Evan and I are. We don't pee in front of each other. In like the 20 years of being together. We don't do any pee pee poo poo <laughs> fart stuff in front of each other. Nothing. And, and it's, we've we've obviously talked about it now, but it really was just kind of like an unwritten rule early on, but not something that we were like hard fast on or it had even because I grew up in a home that was not that way. That was very openly like everyone was very open about that kind of stuff. So it wasn't really? big f- time. Were you ever that person though no, in your family? I was not. So everyone in your family, this is weird. We haven't talked about this. Yeah. So everyone in your family was ripping. Well, mom, but basically you were just like- mom and dad. So now that I think about it, the kids were never that way. <laughs> the kids were like, the kids gross. were never that way. You know what I mean? Like that's the way they revolt. Um, my mom and dad were always like wildly open. You know wow, what I mean? Okay. And just like, it's like you walk in your mom and dad's bed. You're like, hey, mom and dad. And it's like, you're just like, guys, can we not like op- like openly Be use the restroom? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I never like, it was open in my house, but like I never really liked it. And I never was like, this is great. I, I can't wait for more and of this. And in my house, it was the forbidden. Right, right. It was like any fart humor, I might as well pack a bag and be shipped away. Right. Like it was so not accepted in my home now, i do think farts are funny sure like it is funny it's like even to this day like if someone farts it's very funny <laughs> you're almost laughing. yeah i guess it's just insane it's like the most low form of humor but it's so funny um, i have a strong opinion <laughs> about finding your perfect match corroborating yeah. with if you fart in front of each other or not because some people talk about it like 
I know people that literally like two weeks into dating are just like ripping, far, yeah. farting on each other in a way. Sure. So, sure. so and non sexually, like no, in like yeah, a fun yeah, yeah, way. Not, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not talking about their sexual proclivities. Yeah. I'm just talking about like a ha ha, I'm in the car with you and I fart on you. So everyone's got their like freedom with it or they're, you know, it's not my thing. I really do believe that it is kind of a litmus test mm. to finding your match. I really do. I yeah. feel like. People who like to fart together work and people who, <laughs> people who don't fart together, stay together, fart together, stay together. Yeah. And people who are like, no, I close the door when I pee, stay together. Yeah. I feel like that's a good test. So if you're someone who's like, no, I need a farting relationship. There's part of me that's <laughs> just like ship. a fart chip. Yeah. I feel like there's part of me that's just like, just like in the first week of dating, just fart in front of the person. And if they think it's funny and then they fart back. This oh. might work. Yeah, or you might fart them away. But then I'm saying you don't want to be with. You don't want to be with. You don't want to be with somebody. And for me personally, farts aren't for me. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be down with someone who's ripping 24 seven. So if all of a sudden I was interested in an individual, and then within a week of us dating, they are ripping farts, I would almost appreciate mm. it. I'd be like, we can bid each other farewell because yeah. I know this probably isn't gonna. It's not going to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, it's interesting. Right? It's interesting. No, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. Um, but I do, yeah, that's, it's, it, it is so specific, but it's also kind of radical. Like, it's not a slight difference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, if you were, let's say you went on a little vacation together for the first time. Let's say you've been dating for a month. And you're like, hey, let's go to Palm Springs for two days. Right? And then you're all hanging out, chill, 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 chill. and then you like you're like you wake up in the morning, and the person gets up, goes into the restroom, sits down, and keeps talking to you. That's yeah. like a moment of truth. That it's is a, a moment. that is a moment. You know what is the deal? But the thing about it is, some people are like, I just saw my person. Yeah, like I like the they're, intimacy. They're the intimacy. They're, they're engaging with me as I sit on this yeah. toilet, and they're not. They don't. They don't have a distaste for it. For me, I'd be like, taste, yeah. please leave me alone. Right, like, right, right, right. Please, I is don't. a shameful place. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I carry a lot of shame. Let me, let me go. Let me do my my gross bidding in 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 my shameful dark hole, and then uh, and then uh, like come back out like I was just uh, doing my hair or something. <laughs> no, but I mean honestly, like it, I I I think it's a good litmus test. Yeah. I really do. So just throwing that out okay. there. Maybe it's something that you try, you experiment with mm. on you know a weekend to dating somebody or a few dates in. You're yeah. like, and you know who you are. You know whether you're a farting in a relationship person yeah. or not. Even if you've never been in a relationship, I think you know that about who you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I feel yeah. like we're all pretty confident about whether we're farters or not yeah, farters, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Or uh -huh. peeing with the door, oh, pooping with the door open or not, right? hundred percent we know. We know, we yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like that's, okay. that's a good that's a good. But that test. was a good question, though. I don't, yeah, I never, I, I think about that whenever we talk about it, like once every five, three years or something. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's a, it's a really good, interesting litmus test that you bring to the table. Also there. a fun question to ask on a double date with another couple. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> while you're sitting down and eating you say do you all fart in front of each other i feel like though maybe unsavory at dinner for some people it yeah. always is an interesting conversation yeah, if i was on a starter. date and then she goes like do you fart in front of your partner I, I would be like this is a trick this is a like this is a test it does is she saying it to say she doesn't or is she saying to say she does right it's like that's but you're gonna find out but i'm saying intimacy. even with a double date you get to know another couple yeah that's that true way. are you it's guys a fun question. Yeah. it's a fun question i love it all right um another question that we got is this made me laugh someone asked if we kept the cake from our wedding a piece of cake from the wedding to eat for it's like an for an anniversary so that's like a big freeze tradition it? yes so you freeze some of your wedding cake and then you eat it on your anniversary some people you know, do it on their first anniversary or they wait. I'm going to tell you something that you don't know, I think. Did you do this? I kept, I took some of our wedding cake and we went straight to our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. But I said, mom, do you mind dropping it off with some of the stuff, you know, while did we're gone? Did I just gone? eat it like on a Tuesday? No, no, no. I did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't wait a year. 
I couldn't wait three days. <laughs> we got you just eating for breakfast the next morning on our honeymoon. <laughs> we got a home from our honeymoon. Yeah. It was in the freezer. My oh, mom had put it there. Hilarious. And I literally, you you had left for work like and I walked in. It was breakfast time. I poured my cup of coffee and I opened that freezer and I was like, I'll just have a bite. Yeah. Oh and then I God, had a few no bites. Idea. And then the next day I had a few more bites. Right. And within like three days, it, it was, was gone. gone. Yeah, All yeah, of the yeah, cake. Yeah. So. Well, what you know, can't, you know, it doesn't bum me out. So I didn't even know it, it existed. I attempted the tradition of it all to save the wedding cake, but it lasted genuinely after we got home from our honeymoon for about a week. It's a very sentimental so, tradition. It is. Could be sweet. Let me Could make- be kind of like. This is kind of six month old cake. Gross. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Disgusting. You know what I mean? Like you're eating it, and you're actually like, this is kind of ruining our a memory because it's disgusting. I remember I, it being better than this. I will say this: I um, we didn't just keep a slice. We kept like practically a whole cake. So I ate a lot of. You cake ate a whole cake our <laughs> <laughs> after our wedding. So there's that. Oh, um, that's funny. Okay, fam, we got to take another quick pause, yeah. and then I want to get into the hot topic question because we got a hot button question okay. that everyone was bringing up. Um, family, I remember the days when I would dread that moment that I had to cancel a subscription. Okay, knowing they'd make it nearly impossible, and I'd get stuck on hold on the phone for an hour, only to be told I need to send an email request and. Instead, and then not being able to find the email address on their website. Mm. You know the nightmare I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. Um, well, guess what? I don't have to do that anymore because Rocket Money does all the work for me. Oh my gosh. I love you, Rocket Money. You have saved me so much time and money. Also, I don't know how many times I signed up for a subscription service or an app or something I only used once that they kept charging me monthly for that I had forgotten about. Hello, that beer chugging phone app. You know what I'm talking about? But not so now. Not the case now that I have Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Yeah, Rocket Money really did change the game for us when we found out about it. With Rocket Money, we have full control over our subscriptions and a clear view of our expenses. I see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with just a few taps. And also, I love how the dashboard shows us this month's spending compared to last month. Super helpful, so we can clearly see our spending habits. It seriously is the best. I don't know what we did before it, honestly. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you by up to 20 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you, which we are so grateful for. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. I personally saved a little over $1,000 via Rocket Money yeah. this last year, which is incredible. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. That's rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. Rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. Okay, are you ready to talk about the hot button? The hot button. Okay. Because when I tell you, we got a lot of um, responses in the question box, yeah. and so many of them were about this. Yeah. And then I will tell you, I took a quick peek and started listening to a few of the call homes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the voicemails, and the first two I listened to were about this. Okay. Everyone wants to talk about sex. Yeah. And intimacy slumps. Yes. Ooh. So can we do this, actually? Can we play the first uh, call home voicemail yeah. mm -hmm. and then... The second one right after, because I mm -hmm. want to show the family, like, yes. these are two back-to-back -back okay. that I listened to. Okay. Here we go. Hi, Mom and Dad. This is Joe, and I have been listening to you guys since the Chatty Broads days, and I love you, and you are amazing. And also, thank you for getting me into Dungeons & Dragons, Ooh. Uh, but I will hop straight into my question. As a person who has also been in a very long-term relationship, um, we are coming up on 11 years together, I would love to know how you guys manage the ebb and flow of desire without letting it eat away at your self-confidence. Um, I know that people in new relationships believe that they will always 
desire the person that they're with as much as they do on day one. But unfortunately, those of us who've been in multi-year, decade-plus relationships know that that's just not always how it goes sometimes. We are always on each other's teams. We are always striving to communicate and care for one another. Mm -hmm. But life sometimes just gets in the way of the warm and the fuzzy and the sexual and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to schedule and plan those mm. kinds of things. I like things Let's to be spontaneous. <laughs> um, and it doesn't always happen. And sometimes we look up and we're like, oh my gosh, it's been months. And then it gets in my head and I get a little mm. self-conscious mm. and I'm like, is it me? Mm-hmm. What am I doing wrong? And really, I know that that is not the case. I know that it's just life. It's being busy. It's being stressed. It's like we never (laughs) are away from our kid. Like it's just, you know, when do you fit it in? But I'm just wondering how you deal with those kind of patterns and how you deal with managing to keep intimacy alive Mm. in a long-term relationship. And if you tell me that scheduling is the answer for you, I will listen and I will take that seriously. Mm. I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much. Love you both. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe. Okay, can okay, you play one? the next one yes. right after? Yes. Hi, mom and dad and uncle Lee. Um, I am a OG listener. I was abroad and now I guess I'm your child and your niece. Um, I have a question for you too. As um, a sex therapist, Mm. I was wondering if you two would be comfortable talking about how sex and intimacy has fluctuated over the course of your relationship to maybe normalize (laughs) for some couples out there who have been together a long time, a short time, um, kind of what what the trajectory of different relationships look like and how sex and intimacy can change over the course of your relationship for the good, for the better, for the worse. I don't know. You tell us. Um, okay. I love you all. And I am so obsessed with this show. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. I just want to say first and foremost, I so appreciate, first of all, the work as a sex therapist, yeah. blessings, and then also Joe being so vulnerable mm-hmm. and sharing just how they're processing in their marriage and how they feel. Then that- and thanks for hitting us up, Joe, because we have one year on you, so we know way more. About you. <laughs> so we're 12 say. years, you're 11 years, so you're coming to the right place. But and then so many people too sending messages, and I really wanted, I wanted to play those back to back because I wanted to really... I don't know, show the family like how much of a conversation this is and how people are feeling this Mm -hmm. way deep inside, right? Mm -hmm. And I know it's something that I'm constantly battling with deep inside because I think that we do have... We were raised in a culture that is very much just like, I I always harp on this, but like the cosmopolitan articles, it's like, this is the average number of sex couples have per week. And then you're comparing your average to other people's and it's just this comparison thing and that's the obsession Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and how many times and what's good and all Mm -hmm. of that. Um, instead of looking at it as something that ebbs and flows mm-hmm. just like life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I really <clears throat> I really wanted to talk about this a lot. Yeah. Um, do you want to start? Sure. Because I can start. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, 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 no. If you have a if you have a whole thing, like if you have a feel like a strong feeling about it, get right into it. I mean, I'll just say this and then yeah. I'll let you jump in. Um, uh, the way that I have come to look at sex i'll say our personal sexual relationship um over you know the past 18 something years is that it is it ebbs and it flows and to go with those ebbs and flows are so is so important for me okay um i used to resist it Mm. and think I would get in my head and i still do don't get me wrong but get in my head and go there's something wrong because it's been a while or you know when it's when it's happening super frequently then this is when we're healthy and then when it's not we're not healthy but then all of a sudden I'd recalibrate and I'd go but sometimes when it's not happening happening a lot we're doing really well and what does that mean and it's been really important 
for me to recognize that there is so much intimacy outside of sexual intimacy. Mm. And so what's so important is the communication of intimacy in general. When you lose touch with all forms of intimacy, that's then when I feel like there needs to be maybe a recalibration that goes on. Mm. But at the end of the day, life lifes and there's work and kids and time and all of this that happens. And I don't know, just the, the concept of being able to tap in when it happens organically has been huge for me. And Mm. I know scheduling is a huge conversation. I know, listen, I'm not a sex therapist. I know so many people out there talk about how scheduling is important. And I think for some people that does work really well. For myself, I've noticed that sometimes when I do schedule more, I put expectations on myself and on us. Instead of when I just kind of exist in the way that life is flowing and allowing myself to be like, here's a moment where we're feeling super sexually charged and let's enjoy that moment and suck it up as much as we can. And then when there's a moment when life is busy and there's kid and work and Mm -hmm. all of this, and that's not there to not then come down on myself and go, wow, we're not sexually compatible now or we're stroke, whatever. Instead going, this is not the intimate space we're in right now. Where else can intimacy be? Yeah. And then seeking out there's intimacy in our communication mm-hmm. and being really open about, oh, I'm tired and I'm struggling and, you know, different forms of intimacy. Yeah. If no. that makes any sense. I like that. Okay. I like that. I mean, I, I, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I disagree a little bit on, not disagree, yeah. but I have a little bit of a different stance. Yeah. And please. it's just my personal journey on it yeah. a little bit. And I think. That's what makes this unique and special is that like everyone has their different and I come I'm coming at it from a different angle. And anyway, okay. So here's kind of my like thoughts on the ebbs and flows is like I look at it like um like health, like your own health, where it's like there is a part like mental health, any sort of health. It's like there's a part where you kind of need to listen to yourself and find your, you know, listen to what your body's telling you, address those things. But then there's also times when you just need to do the thing because you know it's good for you mm-hmm. kind of concept. Yeah. So I do think that like there's this don't put pressure on the thing, but be aware of the thing. You know what sure. I mean? Be like, oh, I'm not feeling sexual right now. So therefore I'm not going to even think about sex. But that could just kind of then steamroll into like months and months and then you're feeling sure. and then all of a sudden you're anxious about it and you haven't talked about it you know what i'm saying yeah so i do feel like checking in of course i do feel like trying to generate sexiness in sure. your relationship is sure. important <laughs> don't be afraid of ebbs and flows but don't let the don't just let it be, you know, I mean, don't like just because the feelings, things, those things change. I mean, mm-hmm. in the drop of a hat, you could be stressed out and you could change how you feel about everything. Right. So all I'm saying is like, I do think it's important if you're in a long term relationship to not to, to be a, aware of the ebbs and the flows, but then also to like strive for each other. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm a I'm a big fan of like. <clears throat> Kind of like you kind of like the idea of, you know, you know, when you're having a bad day, sometimes you have to force a smile, you know, <laughs> sure. but honestly, force a smile yeah. sometimes. And then actually you'll find yourself kind of changing your own mood a little bit about life or whatever, because you've kind of pushed yourself. Yeah. Sometimes that can happen. All I'm saying is like, I do think it's important to like think about your partner and go, hmm, if I look back, when did I see my partner kind of get excited about me in that way? Sure. And then go like, maybe I should start playing with that. Mm-hmm. And then have them do the same for you. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of experimenting with turning each other on, experimenting with like, how do I kind of, you know, we're all both feeling down. Life's been crazy. Life's been stressed. We're in an ebb, let's say, if you mm-hmm. want to call it that. But how do we maybe think about getting back into the flow? Sure. You know what I mean? Well, and like, I think there, a lot of the questions too. So there was then a whole genre of questions yeah. that were like, how do you keep it spicy and exciting? Right. So I think that's I have an I have a thought on that as well. Yeah. But I think I was more even in the space of the ebbs and flows. 
like normalizing that. Oh, yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah. It, it's just one of those things. That it just is life. If you're together for a long time, you're going to have things come and go and shift and change 100%. And when you start a relationship off, like, yes, of course, you're going to prob- likely be having a lot of sexual intimacy you know you're gonna be it's that that is what's very charged the unknown it's new and it's yeah again it's new Mm -hmm. but then when the longer you're together the more than the other parts of life can infiltrate that and so then with included with that goes those times where all of a sudden like you know there's just the uh, uh, a space in that specific sexual intimacy and i think a lot of people put that pressure on themselves and feel really guilty about that. And I think it's so important. Like you were saying, the communication of it all is so important to have those conversations with your partner. I'll never forget a time when you sat down, I think the first time with me where we had had our first big lull in our relationship sexually. Mm -hmm. And you sat down with me and you're like, you were super vulnerable and you were like, is there something I'm doing? Right, and it helped right. snap me into it because I go, oh my God, no. Yeah. It has nothing to do with you. It's because I'm super stressed and I'm not in this sensual space mm-hmm. because I'm struggling in this way. And then I was able to communicate with you. That's why I feel this way. It has nothing. It's not a personal thing. Yeah. So I think keeping those lines open communication wise is so yeah, cause, cause incredibly it's, important. Because I will say it's rare that both people are on the exact same page all the time you know what i mean of like course. there could be someone who's of like course. i really want sex some other person's like i'm not feeling it yeah could be the opposite could be you're both are down and not really feeling it either way you're not going to know unless you're talking mm-hmm. you and have so, to talk because then resentments can build yeah. the person who's maybe not as confrontational can bury it mm-hmm. think about it let it fester mm-hmm. and then it then it kind of now that now that person's even more turned off and they, you know i don't know i'm just saying like it can the more you talk the more you can kind of handle the ebbs and flows and i bet the more you talk the more you get a little kind of like turned on too because they're kind of like you start sure. talking about sex you start talking about some new idea whatever you know what i mean like, well and that's the thing too so if you're if you're the, if the gateways of communication are open yeah. then you're able to look at your partner and say like hey we're in a space right now you know where we have let's just say a kid and the kid is super busy yeah. with constant sports practices and yeah. we both have a job and it's so busy and you're like i feel like i'm my head's barely above water you can if the communication is open and you know you're both so tired yeah. that you feel like every time when you go to bed or whatnot you're not having sex you're yeah. falling asleep or you yep. want to turn yep. on a yep. show and go straight to bed when the communication lines are open you're able to keep flirting mm. with your partner mm. So there's those moments where, you know, all of a sudden the kid's out of the room and you're super, super tired. You look at your partner and go, I am so tired. But my God, if I was awake right now, Mm -hmm. I would, you know, you're playful and you keep that flirtatious energy going. Even when you both know that probably tonight you're not going to be sexually intimate, you still have that energy pulsating through you so that at any moment when that time And that space opens up and allows Mm -hmm. itself that you can kind of more effortlessly enter into a place of sexual intimacy because you're keeping the flirtation alive. I think that's something that you and I have tried to do a lot, especially over the past like two years where we try to just flirt with each other a lot, even if we're not having tons of sex in that moment or chapter of our lives. We try to just keep playfully mm. flirting with each other. So when that window opens up and we're both all of a sudden in bed and we are a little awake and we're like, oh, and someone touches a certain thing yeah. that we're able to flow more uh-huh. into that space. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel as awkward and clunky because I know it can, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like we could talk about this for hours because it's, yeah, it's, it's a kind big of, one. Yeah. It's a big one. We have to take another quick pause, but I do also then want to talk another question that we got a lot of is specifically how do you keep passion and spice on like a regular basis? So let's get into that. Um, But family, I want to talk with you all about AG1 Mm -hmm. Uh, because I am truly obsessed with it and I have been for a while. And let me tell you, I just, here's the thing. Um, Number one, I just, I don't like swallowing pills. It's tough for me. Mm. (laughs) It's been tough for me for forever. But I want to get in all those vitamins and supplements and the immune support I need. I need them. But also, there's so many that I'm supposed to take. It's so overwhelming. So when I discovered AG1 and I found I could get 
all those vitamins in one scoop, pour it in water and simply drink it. I'm talking I'm getting prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, rhodiola and B vitamins for energy support, folate, magnesium and ashwagandha for stress support, vitamin Z and zinc to support my immune system health in one scoop and water and drink it. Best news ever, okay? And I've been taking it daily since I discovered it and I feel the difference. I love AG1 so much <laughs> so much yeah i do it every morning if you've noticed i look incredible <laughs> he I have something to do with this um <laughs> he does look gorgeous <laughs> i never miss my ag1 in the morning it's incredible i love it um so many things i love about ag1 but the quality is incredible quality for ag1 is isn't just a buzzword it's a commitment backed by expert led scientific research high quality ingredients and industry leading manufacturing and rigorous testing at each step of the process AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. I mean, AG1 is constantly searching for how to do things better. At 52 iterations of their formula and counting, their team is always trying to find better ways to source, test, and aim to find the best quality ingredients available. It's incredible. And I know I can trust what's in every scoop of AG1 because it's tested for 950 contaminants and banned substances, while the industry standard typically only tests for 10. Okay, AG1's team relies on expert led scientific research, sourcing ingredients for potency and purity. I mean, it's the best, truly. Here's the deal. Over the years, I've partnered with AG1 for so long because they make such a high quality product that I genuinely look forward to drinking every day. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash mom and dad. That's drinkag1.com slash mom and dad. Check it out. By the way, those travel packs I'm obsessed with. I have them everywhere. Oh, yeah, I'm a bag. I'm everywhere. Drinkag1.com slash mom and dad. Um, okay. okay, so like I said, the keeping it spicy yeah. was a big one. And by the way, just going backwards, I just wanted to say, I just have to say to every person listening, I just feel so passionate. Don't don't let those sex slumps make you feel any sort of way. Mm, yeah, like a reflection on you as a person no. and stuff like that. that no, can... please. Like that is, it's so important to try to free ourselves from a quote-unquote normal amount of sex. Everyone is different. Some right. people don't have it at all. And that's the desire. Yeah, right, okay? right, Okay? Right. There is no normal. It's what you desire and then your partner desires, right? And it's yeah. communication and that. And it's never going to be perfect. And it's the ebb and the flow. Yeah. And never put that on yourself as shame, okay? Please. Like, I feel really passionate about that. Yeah. I really do. I feel like the scheduling thing... You know, yeah. that was brought up earlier. I feel like we've never been schedulers, really. But, <laughs> We're not schedulers. But even though, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've tried to bring right. it into I'm that part of my I'm not big into life. that. I'm kind of like you, Joe. I'm To be honest with you, like that's a struggle for me. And that's something, okay, and can I stretch us both here? Yeah. Me and you, Joe, is I think we could be better at that because it could help your partner, which then in turn could help you. So like, don't be... I think it's important for, as I'm talking to myself is like, don't be opposed, like try everything. Yeah. Cause I do think that there's a little bit of like, let's say you schedule sex on a Thursday night and Thursday night comes around. You're not in the mode. Yeah. But you could get in the mode. It's kind of like, it could be like, um, Oh, I don't want to go to that birthday party. I'm tired. But then fast forward, you go to the birthday party and you're having a great conversation. You snap out of it. You're having a blast. You, I'm so glad I went to the birthday party. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But your initial feeling was I'm going to stay at home. So maybe there is that zone of like it's Thursday night sex night. I didn't really want to do it. I don't like this. It's not very sexy to schedule, blah, blah, blah. But then next thing you know, you're in the middle of sex and you're having a great time. So like I, as well as you, I think we could be open to a schedule and try it out. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, you go, didn't work for me. But I could be a breakthrough. So sure, sure. I'm, I'm all about like trying everything to see if you can find new ways anyway. Just, yeah, 100%. Just throw that out there. 100%, you know? yeah. Um, but keeping it, keeping spicy yeah. And keeping passion alive. Mm. Um, okay. So I know, of course, there's like the typical 
experimenting in the bedroom with new and different right, things. Right, Obviously, right, right. post communication with your partner, it's very, very important to not just spring something on your partner in the bedroom. I think the right. pre conversation is very important. Again, over dinner, sexy candle lit. Bring it up at some point beforehand when if you want to try. Don't just, don't just be like, I know there's been some remodeling <laughs> yeah. happening you've been hearing. Don't worry about that. And then you just open the door to the Full entire dungeon, dungeon that <laughs> yeah, you've built. Yes. Don't just spring that stuff, okay? Because some people, a lot of people need to process. We have to have the consensuality piece, all of these things. But, um, I know that that's a big conversation. Yeah. Keeping it spicy in the bedroom by trying new things. I will say for me personally, okay. the best way that I can keep it spicy and passionate on my end mm -hmm. is by maintaining my own sensuality via interests. Mm. It is a lifestyle that is outside of the bedroom. Okay, like you bring it in. I got to bring it in. So for me, we've talked about this before. Interesting. But for me, I know that I will feel sexy if I throw on an outfit, glam up, do some catwalk runways around my house mm -hmm, for a hot mm -hmm. minute, go out, get a drink with my girlfriend be playful in conversation you know what i mean just like as jess yeah just be out and be playful uh -huh. and that helps me feel like i'm in a powerful zone mm -hmm. that helps my spiciness that helps my passion in the bedroom i have to regularly be feeling good about me to carry that forward sure. so i think that looks different for everyone for some people you know that's a specific hobby like diving into whatever hobby that is for you for some people it's you know moving your body whether it's like yoga or gym keeping that going to just keep yourself feeling like pinnacle you mm. for me pinnacle me i love fashion i always have yeah. is like putting together a new fit a new hairdo and kind of strutting around that feels like pinnacle me yeah. version yeah. right yeah and when i'm feeling in my power i feel in my power in the bedroom yeah and that helps me be in a good passionate space mm -hmm. with my partner that's one of my big things yeah i think like it's to kind of compound what you're saying like if you're feeling low and you want some spice Go back in your brain to when it was the spiciest and go, what was what was happening? Mm, what was mm -hmm. I doing? You know, and obviously you can't recre recreate everything, but you might be able to recreate some things. Yeah. You know, so it's like, let's say, OK, I was 23 going out every night, you know, pursuing my career, flirting with everyone, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, like, let's say that's what you were doing when yeah. you were like at your sexual peak or when you felt that you were just like at the pinnacle of horn dogness and whatever <laughs> sure. like try to recreate some of that be like okay mm -hmm. i never really go out that much anymore okay try to go out a little bit you know maybe at the bar flirt a little bit even if you have like a serious partner maybe just to kind of like feel like you yeah. got it still because they're i get think permission from your partner of course, Boundaries. Of course, of course, we'll talk about that in a minute but i'm just saying like i think what happens with the with the lack of passion yep is there's this like do i have it anymore feeling that can happen yeah 100%. you know like do i like like the the cliche of like Still got it, right? Yeah. It's like if I'm at the store and someone's like, hey, uh, what's your name? It's like, I still got it. Sure. But that can give you that boost that yeah. you need for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Could be in business, could be in life, your relationship, friendship, whatever. It's a little bit of that boost you need to kind of feel like, okay, don't give up on yourself here. Which, you know? by the way, is an important reminder for you when you are with a partner to remember that sometimes when they're having a lull sexually, that often we put it on ourselves we make it about us and go, maybe I'm not attractive anymore to my partner. Most of the time, I'm pretty, I, I would imagine almost all of the time, it's because your partner isn't feeling themselves. Yeah. So often when I'm a little away in the bedroom where I'm a little bit like, yeah, I'm not interested, it's because I I am feeling down on me yeah. and I'm not feeling like I still got it. I'm not feeling confident in me and it has nothing to do with my partner. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So in those moments, it's maybe good when you see your partner, maybe in a space where, you know, they don't feel like they're down to have sexual intimacy in these moments in yeah. recent days. Maybe that's a good tell instead of the immediate feeling like you want to, take it personally and yeah. be like is it me to look at your partner and be like 
what can I encourage them to do Mm -hmm. that will make them feel their best? If you know your partner is busy taking care of the kiddo all the time and feeling so just burnt out, be like, let me take the little one. Why don't you go out and... Spa you know, day, get your nail do- whatever, nails yeah. done or 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 go for a walk with your friends or go out on the town for a night. Yeah. Like, let me take on mm-hmm. that. Evan does that a lot for me. You're amazing at that. Mm-hmm. When I'm feeling in like a space where you can tell that I am like just in a slump. Yeah. You are always great at being like down to offer. Like, what can I do to help you feel yeah. reinvigorated about who you are? I mean, it's hard. It's like, you know, what's not very sexy is sitting around watching kids all day. Like, that's not... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, or it, sitting around after work and watching TV. It's just like I'm you're just tired. saying. Like, I'm yeah. just, I was like saying, like working all day, yeah. watching kiddos all day, cleaning the house, yeah. You know, worrying about bills, whatever. That is not, you know, when you were 23, that's none of the stuff you were thinking about. You know, yeah. so you were able to kind of free your mind. Mm-hmm. Now we have to be more creative about how to like compartmentalize and help ourselves, how to find sexiness throughout the day. Mm-hmm. You, I think that's a big thing. Is like you can't just do nothing and then go, it's crazy. Like I have no passion anymore. What's wrong with us? Yeah. It's like this is a growing, changing thing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like when you're young, you're kind of invincible. You're, it's just kind of – it feels effortless. Everything's effortless when it comes to passion. Yeah. Passion's usually just oozing out of you all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but you know what I'm saying? When you're young. No, it's, yeah, everything, when everything's pumping. When you get older, pumping. it's kind of like, yo, okay. You know, levels have leveled off. Life's a little more serious, blah, blah, blah. So it's like you got to be intentional. And mm-hmm. the worst thing you could do is do nothing about it and then be, like, confused at why you feel passionless. You yeah. have to be creative and work at it. No, 100%. Yeah. One of the things that you brought up was flirting. Yeah. And someone asked... And I'm sorry, I don't have the exact. I saw it. It was like, uh, do you have crushes on people and things? Well, like there's that. that. Okay. Oh, okay. So one of the questions was, do you all still get crushes on other people? Mm-hmm. And how do you work that out? And the okay. other was, um, what is the whole allowance of flirting in your relationship look like? I've definitely brought that up on the podcast over yeah. like the six, seven years of like our flirtation yeah. conversation. So, okay. To break that one down, that one was probably... Five years ago, we had this conversation. Okay, I'm thinking, right? Maybe about five years ago oh, about like the me flirting. And you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that came to a point in conversation where I was in one of those slumps, yeah, and I was like, I am not feeling like I've got the judge about myself at right. all. I'm feeling really low about myself, and you know, the truth of the matter is. You and I started, we were high school sweethearts. We had like a year and a half break where, you know, we went out and met other people, hooked up with other people, like whatever. But in general, it's been me and you. Yeah. And um, which has been incredible. But then, of course, there's that part of you where sometimes you get insecure in the back of your head where you're like, am I enough? Do I have got, do I have it? All those things you were talking about. Mm. So when Evan and I had this conversation, it was a little bit like, hey, we need to have an active conversation about boundaries in our relationship. And it was, in fact, a time during Chatty Broads where we were having a lot of amazing people coming on who were in open relationships or in poly relationships. And hearing their stories was so inspiring to me. We're in a monogamous relationship, but like hearing how much communication they were constantly having with their partner or partners Mm -hmm. was incredible to me. It was like everything needs to be talked about in these ways, even the really uncomfortable so that we have clear cut boundaries and you know how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So it inspired us to have a conversation where it was like, Hey, you know what? I want to get your permission that when I'm out and about, you know, at a bar with my friends that you feel comfortable knowing that I might get my flirt on. I won't cross a boundary farther than that. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. But like, I need you to know so that I feel safe when I go out knowing that you feel that you're comfortable with this, that I can go. And if I'm getting a little playful and flirty, that I'm not feeling guilty that you as my partner, that we have an agreement in this way. And that's kind of where we landed, Mm -hmm. where it was like, hey, when we're out and I'm being flirtatious that you're okay with that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But then, of course, we have our clear-cut boundaries, yeah. right? And the mm-hmm. lines drawn in the sand where we're not comfortable that we've agreed to going further, right? Yeah. Um, And, again, 
everyone's different. So it's not one of those things where I'm like, everyone do this right, and it's good. Right, but right, I know right. for us, it has seemed to be very successful where, you know, you, you, you get that little boost and you're kind of in your a, a place of like a sensual space. Yeah. Right. I, I look at like a video game. Right. It's kind of like, let's say I'm at a coffee shop. It's like if I flirt with this barista, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of like it's a one and done. Sure. You know what I mean? Like it's a little bit like this is a fun moment to experiment with to feel if I still quote have it, if I, you know, maybe ha wanna brush up on my social skills or my charm <laughs> a skills. A lot of it is my charm skills. But but seriously though, right? Lacked there's on, there's, yeah, a, there's kind of this like there's kind of this like when you're single and young and you're vital, you kind of have this, like, again, energy's pulsing, passion's pulsing, you're, you're kind of nervous and having it exciting, right? And what can happen later is you, you feel like all that diminishes. Yes. So I'm all about, like, to, like, video game it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're, not, if you're in a relationship where, like, there is a boundary of, like, you can't go past flirting... Then it's like you got to be careful of like the work wife. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so 100%. it's like I guess like, you, yeah, you and I don't have that as much. I we haven't even had that conversation mm, as much because right. of our certain our work life spaces. isn't like. But people who like work in an office, yeah, same people every 100%. day. That could get weird. Yeah. So it's one of those things too. It's like you know, if you go to a bar one night with a friend and there's a guy and you're just chatting with him or the bartenders, whatever, yep. and you have this flirty like interaction, Banter, sure. then you're kind of like it's a one and done. You'll never see it again. You you did the video game thing to kind of feel, mm -hmm. but. You know, you got to know your limits and know yourself, too. It's like, mm -hmm. like if you're at work every day, same people every day. Yeah. And then you're trying that on with like your, you know, other person you work with. And then yeah. you guys start developing something. But then sure. now you, every day you're in it. And then it starts then it'll start to fuck with your head and you'll start to kind of maybe I should be. With the, I don't know. I do think it's one of those really like be intentional about the flirting. Don't just be like, well, I'm, I, you know, we both said we can flirt now. So it's just now all over. It's like, if you have boundaries set up in your relationship, it's kind of like use it as a video game to, to like, Oh, okay. Enjoy this interaction with this person. You know what I a mean? A thousand percent. Yeah, no, you're right. And, and I, I, that the, the work situation was a great example. And off of that, the question about, do we ever have crushes? I mean, sure. We're human. Right. right. Everyone you're at some point, if you're with someone in a long-term relationship, yeah. you'll meet somebody and be like, oh, they what? make Wait, me what? feel. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't... This is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> I thought when I don't... you get married that it's all, all attraction gone? for oh, all yeah, other people ceases. goes away. Yeah, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Oh. Um, but like, I mean, that's just human nature. Yeah, of course. And what's so important, I think, in a relationship, and again, I was so inspired by hearing so many people from like the poly community like talking about communication it's so important mm. to be so honest with your partner in the way that like hey let's be real with each other mm -hmm. and not burying it in the sand and acting like it's impossible mm -hmm. that you're ever going to have a crush i know it's so hard it can be so hard to hear right yeah. and there's the jealousy i you know i've my jealousy, I've I've gotten better at handling it over the yeah. years. But when we first got married, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. When we first mm. started dating, yeah. so jealous. So like the idea of hearing you say that you could ever develop a crush on someone was just devastating. Yeah, isn't that weird to think about when you yeah. look back on like the early days? It was like, oh my gosh, yeah. that would have been brutal. Right. And there was a lot of like, you know, I had to really examine myself to see where that came from I feel the same. I feel the same so way. much of that did come from you know culture also so much of it came from growing up where there was a lot of infidelity mm. um and so i was like it's you know if someone has a crush like i this yeah. person will be unfaithful right. like i just expected sure, it sure. right and i put a lot of that pressure on you um, instead of then really like turning inwards and looking like, where is this coming from? And where are these childhood wounds that it's coming from and all of these things? Um, but the importance of being able to like really just acknowledge the truth of like, we're all human beings. Mm. At some point, you're going to have the butterflies with another person. It just is what it is. What you do with that is the important part, 100%. right? And what you do with that is completely based on communication with your partner. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a space where you're, you've practiced a lot of communication with your partner where you can openly look at your partner and say, hey, 
this person kind of feeling some butterflies with. Right. It's so uncomfortable to do, but it it quenches again if you're in a monogamous mm-hmm, relationship mm-hmm. like we are. I'm just using ours as an example. It quenches the secrecy mm. or it like takes away the secrecy from okay. it. And so I know in our relationship, like there was a specific individual who, you know, a few years ago, I was like, oh, this person is attractive yeah. Yeah. and he was a little playful with me yeah. and I was a little playful with him. And I felt kind of those butterflies uh-huh. and I went to you and I was like sweating yeah, <laughs> when yeah, I went yeah, to yeah, you yeah, and yeah, brought yeah. it up. And I said, hey, this is kind of how I'm feeling. And you were wonderful about it. I probably wouldn't have handled it nearly so well. But you were kind of like, okay, well, how do you feel that way and why? And you asked me questions and it took the secrecy away from it. And then they were like, well, I love you yeah. and I'm in a monogamous relationship with you and nothing will go far forward from from this. Yeah. And it was like, this is nothing but a butterfly feeling that yeah. everyone gets. And it died there because of that. It just Well, died. I went out and hit on everyone I could possibly <laughs> yeah. find to get back at her without her knowing. Just because I wanted to be able to come back and hear, well, I have forty-seven crushes. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I think I think you're right. I think it's I think it's a fine line. If I'm being honest with you, yeah, it's like if you have a little crush on someone, it doesn't mean go run back to your partner. Right? I mean, by the way, I have three crushes on these people. You got to kind of like take your moment, take a second with it. You know, like if it's developing into something you're a little nervous about, if it's like, you know. Something you would want to know, you know, you know sometimes like something. Okay, would I want to know about this too? Like, or you know, it's like it's not something. I, it's like something you take a moment with but and kind I of think, think about how yeah. to communicate and, and like think about, you know, what's the point of communicating too? Like, what are like what are you trying? But I to think if you're over, communicating often with your partner, then it'll come. You natural. then, but I'm saying you know whether your partner is wired in the way of like I want you to communicate right, all those things with right. me or I don't want to hear sure, about it. Sure, sure, that sure, then sure. is a conversation that's happening. Yeah. So in our circumstance, it was one of those things where I was like, you know what? Like I feel like I want I want to be fully honest yes, and I know I Evan can that. handle that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wants to know. And so it was a little bit like, hey, I want to be fully transparent with you and that's how our relationship is, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm not saying go run every time you feel something and would tell you your want, partner. Would you want to, me to do the same thing to you? What do you think? <laughs> no, I'm asking. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think you would. I think I think you say you don't. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> yeah. one of those things where it's like, I think you say you don't want it. Like you've kind of said that to me in the past. Stuff like I don't even want to know. You know? Yeah. Um, but I think. Finding out would be far worse. Yes. So if somehow you found out that like I was flirty with someone or like it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you're kind of like, I don't want to really know. But then at the same time, like the initial shock or frustration or whatever the feeling you might have about it is better than accidentally finding out or someone makes a comment or you catch a vibe i would say i don't want to know about like the little moments but if there was something that you were like yeah there's definitely kind of a chemistry there i would want to know yeah because then there's like you can keep a pulse on it you can be like just checking in on that are we good 100 percent. you know what i mean because sometimes it can be like because what's gonna happen sometimes Mm -hmm. is that you can have too much self-confidence that you can handle everything not yes, you, sir. I'm just saying anyone. You Where know, there's this I've like, well, I, well just a little crush. I would never yep. let it get out of hand. Yep. And I would never, uh, you know, and I'm, this is, we've already talked about, it. it's cool to flirt. You know what I mean? We're, we're cool. That's our boundary. But I just have a little flirt with this person. No big deal. I can handle, I can handle, I can handle it. Fast forward to a bunch of fights, a bad situation, no sex for a while. You're in your head, blah, yep. blah, blah. And that person's laying it on thick and then boom. You know what I mean? So versus if it's kind of open that they know you have a crush or that there is a crush vibe, then that uh, then your partner can be like, everything cool, by the way? And then you're like, oh, you know, 100%. whatever. It's a little bit of a accountability. It is, is an good. accountability. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, like accountability If that's what you're is, looking for in a relationship. Yeah, and I think accountability is important in a relationship, whether it be, you know, again, whatever your boundary looks like. Right, but whether it be, is. whether it be, 
with intimacy, with flirting, with lifestyle, with finances. Yeah. Accountability is you're a team. Yes. You've chosen this person. If you're in a relationship, this is your partner. I think accountability is important, but accountability can't happen unless number one, you're communicating. And then number two, you're willing to hear the uncomfortable truth yes. sometimes, yes. you know, and I know I don't always do that so well, but it is. But what I will say, what thing. you're good at is <laughs> saying things that are uncomfortable. Yeah, I'll put it out there. I'm not as good at that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it's always kind of the first one to go. Yeah, who's going to show their scary. cards And first. Jess was the yeah. first one to go. Yeah. And, that, and that was, yeah, that was that flirt flirtation conversation that maybe happened, what, maybe five years ago, I guess. I remember. And I remember, if I'm being honest with you, it was not, like, great for me. Like, yeah, I didn't, didn't like love it. the conversation. You know what yet. I mean? I felt hurt. Mm -hmm. I felt like, what do you mean... You know, even if I agreed, it was kind of this like, yeah. well, you, what's, what's wrong with me, you know, kind of 100%. thing. And then, you know, kind of realizing, OK, you know, it's not about and then kind of growing and maturing yeah. and realizing. But, you know, don't and like, yeah, don't be fooled to think like all you got to do is communicate. It's all going to be fine. It's no, like, no, 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 no. This no, is no, this no. is this called doing the right thing by your partner and yeah. talking about things and talking about your desires and your wants and knowing it's going to be weird, knowing it most likely will hurt someone, knowing it most likely could result in a big fight. Who knows what it is? But is it better to go there or better to bury and resent and have issues? And, you know, it's like I think that's so important. And then I also think just in general, what's so important in a relationship, at least that I found with us, is to always remember that so often what we think is about us is mm. about your partner. Right, so like for right, me, right. when I came to you about the flirtation conversation, I was like, I am very happy and content and want you to be my partner for forever. Mm. I'm struggling finding myself right yeah, now. Right. And I need to get back to that zhuzh point yep, the zhuzh where point. I felt like my sweet spot was confidence. And yes. part of my personality is I'm a playful person. And I had to feel like I need to get my partner's, you know, handshake understanding that yeah. like if I'm playful, yeah. you're okay with that. Yeah. Because that's how I feel in my space of confidence, yep. you know. And it was about me. It had nothing mm -hmm. to do with you. Um, another, you know, big thing off of the flirtation, off of the crush question yeah. was, do you ever get scared? This was a, a question that numerous people sent. Do you ever get scared or sad thinking about that you'll never have the feeling of falling in love again? Mm. Which I thought was a really, like, powerful question. Whoa. Thanks for... Thanks for that. <laughs> I've never, I thought, never about even about thought about it. that. <laughs> I've never um, thought about it before. Um, yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. But listen, like it's like anything. It's like mm -hmm. anything. There's a sacrifice for anything. It's like, do you ever feel sad that you can't just eat candy for every single meal always it's like yeah i would love to eat candy all day but then my teeth would fall out of my head <laughs> mine already right? are yeah but i'm just saying like there's a sacrifice yeah, no. for everything and it's kind of like people who want to have children it's like exactly. listen you know that if you have children your the amount of free time is going to go down someone right. who wants to um uh, adopt an animal it's like hey you're going to have the love of this animal but yeah. you know that like you're not going to be as flexible for like traveling as much maybe or so you don't have an animal and you're going to be sad about never having an animal but now you but can just travel exactly, exactly so it's kind of like a give and take so yes yes don't run from one of the biggest things i learned in in therapy is to not run from the feelings, mm -hmm. but like invite them in, sit with them, yeah. and then let them go. So it's like, don't be like, oh, I'm never going to be fall in love again. It's like, just like invite that feeling and invite the fear in, feel it. You're like, why is this important? You might discover something new. Mm -hmm. You might go, man, maybe I, maybe want to poly relationship. And, you know, maybe I do. Maybe, maybe the act of falling in love is very important to me. Yeah. And so I want to be able to experience that all the time. And I want my relationship to look like that. Yeah. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. But I'm just saying you'll never know if you don't if you're just like shutting it down yep. and then you might yep. actually bring it in and realize, you know what? Falling in love is fun. But you know what's way more important to me? 
a monogamous committed relationship. That's more important to me than the, than the, than the feeling of falling in love. Okay. You know what? I'm glad I went through that, but it's like, I, but I, but that's for real, right? The excitement of meeting someone you're attracted to having like an exciting conversation, it's incredible. developing chemistry it's incredible. and then being like texting or something like that is very exciting yes. and it's very fun. And so the idea that like, as we get older and we're in more longer relationships and feeling like there's a bit of a death there. Yeah. Very natural. I miss my knees not hurting every morning when I wake up. Exactly. That I'm right. getting older. Right. Like my knees hurt right. when I wake up and I wish I could go back to miss those being ha times. Hangovers for 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could go back to those moments <laughs> when I was 21 and jumped out of bed and right. didn't think about my body hurting. Right. Same thing with the moment you and I fell in love. Like, mm -hmm. I wish I could go back and sit in that feeling and be like, wow, this was so magical. Like, you know, you, 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 you those are those moments. Yeah, yeah. of course. It's and with media, social media, life, movies, there's such an, there's such an obsession with staying young in every way. Yes. Right. Like very the true. staying young forever concept mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where it's like there can be this real feeling of like, man, I used to just be fleeting and fun all the time. And life was this. Mm -hmm. And now it's blah, blah, blah. it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like also just be aware that, too, it's like, was it all that cracked up to be? Because I, I have a lot of single friends and all they can talk about is how much I have a lot of single friends that have a lot of sex and fall in love all the time. And all they can talk about is how much they wish they had a family. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, mm -hmm. and then the grass, vice versa. The grass, so well, that's what I'm saying. And then, that's, and grass then the person, yeah. grass is always going to realize that like, you're going to always romanticize things. You, you know are, what I mean? But are. like, you can make what you have pretty amazing. It's so important yet yeah, to be, be here now, be here to now. sit yeah. in that. And I will say this for someone in a long-term relationship, when it comes to falling in love again um if you are in a long-term relationship i can tell you that you can fall in love again mm. i have mm. i've fallen in love with you multiple mm. times oh i love you i feel like you know it's one of those things where you're like i've been really hit recently about the age thing mm -hmm. and i think when you your comment about the social media it's so true it's like it's that obsession obsession yeah. obsession i have to always be resisting and pushing against that i can fall into mm -hmm. that big time but when i think about our time together and it's like what almost 20 years i think yeah. about like when you're together for a long time with yeah. someone there are so many different iterations of you and Jess has become a different person multiple times. Yeah. You've become a different person multiple times. 100%. And I've been able to fall in love with you in those different iterations of who we are, mm. right? Like parent, like dad Evan, I mm. fell in love with. A mm. person that I saw, you know, Evan in this very stressful life situation that we worked through together. I fell in love with that version yeah. of you. Yeah. Like I fell, you're able to keep falling in love with mm. someone. You know, when you find... When you're with the person that, and, and, and we had a conversation with, um, our family a couple of days ago on our anniversary, you know, and they were like, what do you, it was sweet. You know, yeah. they're all older and they're like, what do you think you've learned over these like, you know, years together? And both of us were really very heavily fixated on the idea of, I know, I know we're talking about sexual intimacy and all of that. And that is important. Don't get me wrong, but finding the person who you just like spending the most amount of time yeah. with because if you decide to have a partner a long-term partner and that's what you want you will be spending a lot of time with that person and when you find that person that you love spending time with like i think that's that's needs to be the fixation yeah. over what a lot of media tells us is immediately the looks the butterfly the hot the spicy yeah. like if you have that amazing but like that person that you're like, I love spending m moments with them. I love talking to them because that's what you're going to be doing. I love just doing life with them because that's what you're going to be doing most mm -hmm. of the time. And I think about even too, like when we're having these conversations about like, you know, the flirting and like, you know, making sure that you don't cross the boundary when you're in a monogamous relationship, not to cross these certain boundaries, even if you're in the. Uh, an open a poly relationship like here are the lines you've set not crossing those boundaries because then when you cross those boundaries and it goes into the level of cheating like you know how do you keep those boundaries and da, 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 da. and I think about when you find the person who you love to just spend the most amount of time with it's like those are the moments where you're like oh 
if I was unfaithful, if I cheated on this person, I wouldn't just lose a flame. I would lose the person that I love spending the most amount of time with. Like mm -hmm. that idea is so devastating, mm -hmm. right? That I do think that that's something to consider when looking for a partner where it's like when you find that person that you're like, no, but this is so much more than just a sexual attraction or a passion. Mm. Like if I were to be unfaithful and or I could potentially do something to lose this person, yeah, I'd lose someone who I just want to spend all my moments with. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a different tangent, but mm. um yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I, I mean, it, there's there's so many layers. Yeah, yeah, there's so many layers to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of layers to it and we can kind of get into the romance of it all and, and how much we love each other and all these, and which is super important. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like there's just a lot of life looks like a lot of like, I've been together with you a long time. Yeah. Um, we're not really having much sex. Mm -hmm. We're kind of phoning this whole thing in a little bit. And I think, I think that kind of happens when you kind of take each other for granted too. When there's like yeah. this, where are you going? You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. We're kind of locked in. We got a kid. We got multiple kids. Whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You got a house. You know, dogs. Like, you know what I mean? For me to like leave is, you know, I break the whole, I'm not leaving. Yeah. You're not leaving. You can kind of. You can take each other for people granted. Can, you know, we all can kind of get in that zone. Where it's like, yeah. I can kind of allow bad behavior to go a long mm -hmm. time because what are you going to do? Are you really going to leave? You know how bad sure. it is? But <laughs> sure. honestly, you can, uh, con no, you can kind of, without even like, like subconsciously, I mean, you can yeah. kind of just like stop trying. Mm -hmm. Stop trying for each other. Because mm -hmm. when you were young, when you first met, every, it was pure try. You know, it was like you're, you're contemplating you every text. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're contemplating you're so where are we going yeah. to dinner? What am I wearing tonight? Yeah. 10 years into marriage, you're just like, you can fall in to stop trying, mm -hmm. but you can't then be shocked when you're feeling no passion. Yeah. So I do feel like it's important to consistently try to connect with your partner, to impress your partner, whatever it is. Like, yeah. what would you want? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. It's like, would you want to be pursued, impressed, tried for? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Put on a pedestal a little bit. Yeah. And I think we all want, like, I think it's important to kind of like remember that like, oh, you know what? We're, we're fighting for each other here. And so, you know, dig in a little bit again. You know, mm -hmm. if you're feeling real lully in your relationship sexually, whatever it is, dig in a little bit. Take some time to think about it. Take some time. Oh, what can I do to make my partner feel amazing today? hundred percent. And I think you start doing that with each other. You're going to start finding the, 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 the frequencies start to rise again. Yeah. No, I think that that's a good challenge for sure is off of the question, does it make you sad to think about the fact that you'll never feel have that feeling of falling in right. love again? I think the challenge is try to fall in love with your partner again. Yeah, like start if getting you're back in a, If you're that. in a long-term relationship, like try to fall in love with your partner yes. again. A hundred percent. Like look them in the eyes and make an active effort to be like, remember how I felt. Like what was it like at the beginning? Yeah. And like doing? you said, what was I <laughs> yeah. doing? What were they doing? Yes. What what is what are the reasons that I fell in love with this person? Yeah. Like remind yourself of those often because you're right. It's so easy to take someone for granted. Well, you think about like that's for, like, same thing yeah. with your friends. It's so easy to take your 100%. best friends that you've had for a long time for granted when you're like, damn, I should be so grateful for the yeah. fact that I have this amazing person in my yeah. life. You know, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. Should we do a couple more before we wrap? Yeah. Do you want to do some some voice yeah, let's mails? Do let's do some voicemails. Hi, mom and dad. Um, I'm wondering. So I just had my first baby um, about half a year ago. And I was wondering if you have any tips for keeping your relationship a priority after having a baby. Um, love you guys so much. And listening all the way from Northern Canada. Thanks. Northern Canada. Hello, nice. a Canadian friend, a family member. Okay, keeping your yeah. relationship a priority when you first have a baby. I will tell you what, family. It's tough. This is something that I, that's one of those moments I wish I could go back and have had communication mm -hmm. with you before Ember 
popped out, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, We didn't really talk before Ember came about like, hey, how can we make an active effort? What's your life going to look like? What's my life going to look like? We didn't communicate nearly as much as we should. And I feel like something that you can do if you haven't had uh, the little one yet is when you're pregnant or even before, but especially like right before the baby comes to sit down and have a really, really like fleshed out conversation about what each partner's expectations are once the baby comes. Like, are you expecting to like, your work hours, how often are you expecting to be gone? Yeah. How how often are you expecting to be home? How often are you expecting that family's going to help us with the baby or that we're going to have a, like like let's have those conversations mm-hmm. beforehand so that that takes off the stress and the assumptions that we're going to have on our partner yeah. because that's I think often what can cause a lot of stress in the relationship after the little one comes is that there are a lot of assumptions made like oh I was assuming you would be able to be here for this or that you know those conversations that don't happen beforehand and there's stress on an already very time consuming overwhelming postpartum type yeah. situation right um And I think if you have those conversations before, you're then able to acknowledge that, let's be real, especially first first little one, it's a brand new situation. We're all going to be tired. We're probably not going to be as flirty with each other, uh, have as much time to go on dates with each other. So that's already the conversation that each person is expecting. Like, hey, this is going to be probably a stressful, overwhelming time where we're feeling a different type of love for each other and it's all new. Yeah. But like, let's be gentle with each other Mm -hmm. as we process this together. And then speaking of scheduling, if there's any way that you are able to schedule any sort of date time together I know you know depending on if families around or like finances for a babysitter or you know whatever the access is that can vary um but I think it is important to like have those alone moments together and be intentional about that even if the little one has like an hour nap yeah to be like I know we so want to just take a nap right now but we should just sit and eat dinner together and talk or cuddle together. Yeah, and to be honest with you too, like as I think, as, as yeah, as I, th- you are. I think too, like just like sitting in the dinner table or like on the couch is not the move. Like, you okay, kinda, you think we gotta go? Yeah, I think you gotta go somewhere. Like, gotta it mean you gotta like sit at like a Michelin star restaurant. You could just <laughs> sure. be like picnic, whatever. Like, just go and do. Yeah. The issue is like the house becomes very not sexy. True. Because you're just kind of like. Yeah, baby, and like you're covered in spit. You're up like 24/7. covered in shit yeah, and yeah. Like <laughs> spit up, and everyone's kind of just like in survival mode. Yeah. And so, like, I personally think the house becomes very like a non-sexual place and a non-like romantic spot pretty quickly. Yeah, you're and right. And so, I think you got to get the hell out of there, yeah. and then come back, and then it feels a little more fresh. So, like, yeah. I'm a big fan of like. Don't phone. Like, it's easy to kind of phone it in. It's easy to be like, oh, it's just we'll, we'll just order in and chill on the couch. And it's like, yeah, that's a little bit of a connection. But like, I do feel like you have to be intentional about the connection, yeah. or else that'll just become the norm, and then you'll find yourself not. You no, know. you're right. You're right. And even like, if you don't have the, um, you're not in a situation where you have someone who can watch the little one for yeah, an hour. Yeah. You could, if you're able to take your baby. And go to the park and picnic. Yes. Just to relocate, I think, is just helpful Get in out. general. Yeah. Get out, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I, it's a, it is a very overwhelming space. Um, so sending you so much yeah. love. But I think, I, I do really think, again, like if you're able to have any sort of conversation before and prep in any sort yeah. of way, that is helpful. Yeah. You know. Agreed. All right. One more? Yeah. Hi, mom and dad. My name is Megan. I wanted to congratulate you on 12 years of being married. And I also wanted to get your advice and your opinions on some things about communication as a couple that's been together since you were teenagers. And I know you've been through a lot of different phases of life together. Um, so I am, I recently turned 21 and my girlfriend is 22. And we've been together for just a little bit over a year now. And 
I've noticed that based off, well, not I've noticed, we've noticed together, and we talk about it a lot, that our communication styles are very different based on our upbringings. Mm. So when we have a conflict, I want to dive in and fix it. Like, I don't want this disruption. I want to just fix it and move on and just live our happy lives. Um, Not that I want to blow over it, for sure. I want to fix the issue, but I want to fix it now. And my girlfriend, when there's a conflict, she completely shuts down. Like, to the point where even I'll be asking her questions and I will want to talk with her and she's just completely silent. And I know she's not giving me the silent treatment. It's based off of, um, you know, fears and issues that have happened in the past. So it's not anything that I hold against her. But the fact that I want to fix things right away definitely doesn't help. Um... So both of us end up just kind of being frustrated. And we've worked on, you know, I'll say, okay, I can give you some time, but I do want to come back to this. Or she's been really good about trying to open up. But, um, yeah, I can see that being a problem, just being such different communicators. And I'm grateful that we both want to fix it and we both want to work on it. I wonder if you guys have anything similar in your relationship or even just other types of communication where just from the way you were raised or the experiences you've been through you feel uh like you don't just perfectly mesh naturally in what you've done to work on it now being 12 years later in marriage a lot longer in your whole relationship and how that has progressed over your relationship so thanks mom and dad bye First of all, Megan, you said you're 21. <laughs> you are sound so mature. You and your girlfriend both. The fact that you're like, yeah, we're talking through this, and we're. I mean, like, let me tell you what. Okay, 21, I was like, yeah, uh, my girlfriend's so annoying. And <laughs> yeah, no, she literally. Stop bugging me it's like, and she won't. <laughs> like straight up, what you're talking about. Evan and I started talking about in our relationship when we were like 30. Yeah. So I mean, you are so. And I'll say this too, Megan. You sound a lot like Evan, and your girlfriend sounds a lot like me. Evan yeah. is the one in our relationship who's like, we have a problem. Let's fix it right now. Yeah, like my feelings aren't super tied to issues. Yes. I think that's kind of the thing that sounds like you're alluding to a little bit. It's like, sure, if feelings are hurt, whatever, but I'm, I can kind of move on quick. It's kind of like, let's just figure it out. And once we have a solution, then we move on. Yes. Versus, I feel like, Jess, it's a little bit I like, sound way more like your girlfriend. It's, where there's I much str- more connected to a simple yeah. argument about like, you know, you've been doing this thing lately. And then it's like... Now we're into like who you are as a person. Sure. That's where I can get frustrated with Jess. If I'm being honest with you mm-hmm. in our fights, it's like I'm not talking about our relationship <laughs> and our life. I'm just talking about this thing, this one thing. It has nothing uh-huh. to do with how you've done in the past. I or have it's a just full, literally it's just this thing. That's I have it. full spaghetti brain. Right. Everything's connected in my brain. Um, but like Megan said, and I loved this. God, it's so mature. The yeah. fact that you know. That you, because of the way you were raised, you want to fix problems right away. And because of the way that your girlfriend was raised, she's pulling away and wants yeah. to like be alone. Mm-hmm. That is exactly how Evan and I are. Evan's family, you were raised in a way, you hash it out right then and there. My family, it is like you walk away, things weren't shared openly yeah. it's a lot of feelings and passiveness and then you went alone and you like were grinding about them in your own private space mm-hmm. so i can like shut down um and i can run into a cave so to, to quickly really though what as i was saying is like i went into you and i was like oh yeah you're this way or this way but like what can happen and i bet me and you are the same mm-hmm. megan um is that because we are comfortable in it we can get probably get caught up in like trying to win versus caring for the feelings. So I do feel like what can happen sometimes is like when you're really comfortable in conflict or really comfortable in just like trying to find a solution, that it really comes about finding a solution and not thinking about the person's like feelings Mm -hmm. and how it actually affects them and how they're actually. So that can be my weakness is that like I can make things too simple and not realize that like there's a human being connected to the argument or the issue that needs to get resolved that like there's a human being with feelings and actual you know what i mean this isn't like a math equation yeah this is a human equation yeah and so and you could have the quote-unquote right answer but that's not the right answer exactly so i think that's also the thing too is like it's sometimes it's not as simple as we think it is yeah and i think you know what you're asking megan like you know us having been together for 
a long time and um, you being younger and being like, okay, we have different communication styles. Can it work? I think a hundred percent it can work. I mean, like you and I, I'll say this, the, the, the conversation of our different communication styles, I think will always be a thing that comes up with us. Mm -hmm. Like we'll always get into tiffs because of the way that you communicate in a disagreement versus like how I handle it Mm -hmm. and us just being different. But over time via communication, we have gotten so much better and I think we will continue to get better because now Evan does such an amazing job of not of recognizing that not immediately like I'm not going to always be in the space to immediately hash something out. I might be able to look at him now and go, Evan, I'm going to need you to give me a couple hours and then you can go, okay, sounds good. And I will walk away. Which is hard for me. It's hard for you. I don't like that. No, because it makes you sad and you get anxious. Yeah, it's hard for me. Because you want it to be wor- worked out and like everything. And is what all can good. happen too? People like me, we can feel like we're right. Like the way we communicate is correct. Yeah. And the way you communicate is wrong. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's also like a big thing too. Is mm-hmm. like, Megan, don't think that like one day she'll come around to your way of thinking. Sure. Which can be a temptation. I don't get that energy from Megan. I'm not. Well, Megan no, no. I'm just like kind of. I'm just putting. So, like, no, but it's saying. Yeah. You know, we're so different. We communicate yeah. differently. It's like. I am also like a big fan of like two people going, okay, cool. We communicate so differently. So let's like split the difference and meet each other in the middle. Yeah, 100%. It's what can happen is one person can be like, well, I, I, I communicate correctly. So what can I do to get my partner to start communicating correctly like me? Sure. Versus yeah. how do I start connecting with them the way they communicate? But if you're both doing that, you're yeah. going to meet in the middle really nicely. 100%. What you can find, Megan, is, again, you sound like you're so thoughtful and that your partner's so thoughtful and you yeah. all are having this great communication. What I could see happening is that you two find a beautiful way to, like, grow from each other and just, like, learn different styles of communication yeah. and meet in the middle in a really lovely way. Yeah. Like I said, we've gotten to a place now where, you know, where Evan knows if we're having a little bit of an argument and I say, I need a minute. And he goes, gotcha. And I will go away. And then it's not like a storm off now anymore, right? It's it's like, hey, I'm going to need just a moment. Yeah. And I'll go and have some time alone. I gather my thoughts. And then we come back in the middle when, you know, uh, under a reasonable amount of time when I'm feeling yeah. ready. And then there's, uh, we've grown from each other though, because I used to be like, I'm shutting down for a whole day. Yeah. And now I'm a little more like, I need 10, 15 minutes. Totally. You know what I mean? Like we've come together and there's been an understanding of like, okay, like grown from each other in communication style. And I could see that absolutely happening Mm -hmm. with you, Megan, where it's like, hey, you know, we're finding the positives in how both of us communicate. The positive being the fact that you're willing to really want to like make it work like right out the gate. And then the positive in your partner being like, she really needs to process and think before she says certain right. things so that certain things that might be hurtful aren't said. And there's two really beautiful things about mm-hmm. that. And you can bring those things together. So I love that. Sound like your years. I'll say this. You're years ahead of us. Years so ahead. bravo you're, to you both. Fine. You're years ahead of us. I've even thinking about this and not just being like, <laughs> yeah. my partner's annoying. Is no, I mean, you ahead. are light years ahead. So Amazing. yeah. Amazing. Well, we got so many questions. Oh my gosh, we I have this, them we saved. Could do 40 of these episodes. We can let us know if you want us to do more yeah. relationship style questions where I guess we're just kind of riffing off and just of just chatting things. about life together. We love doing them. Um but again, please to YouTube comment comments, comment below on the shows. Traders 2, Love is Blind Sweden, yeah. other things, you know, Again, I think we're going to do the circle. I yeah. feel pretty stuck on the circle. Yeah. So I feel like okay. we all need just need to get on that bandwagon. Okay. Okay. Right. But, you know, other than that, like, let us know. Vanderpump, like, what are you feeling? Let you us feeling? know. Family, we love you we all. We love you. Mwah. I love you. Good luck on all Thanks this stuff. I love you so much. Happy 12. Happy 12. And many happy more. And many more. And there's many other questions like... I really wanted to get to. So maybe we could do that another one of these because yeah, there was, was kind of a lot. No, no, just in general. I said there was a lot. I was looking okay. through all of them. I'm and like, I was like, I'm so curious. I know there were so many really good questions. So let's do another one because we're kind of long winded with some You mean us? Yeah. We love you guys. We love you, family. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye.